the 67th uh, anniversary. Coming up on August 6th um, is the anniversary of the uh, Hiroshima bombing. And that was uh, with a uranium weapon that they were so confident was going to work, they, they never bothered to test it. Uh, Hiroshima was the test. And then three days later, we had the, uh, the bombing of Nagasaki, which uh, was with a uh, plutonium weapon. And the uh, Trinity test was uh, to uh, a test of, uh, of the uh, plutonium weapon. Um, but that is the great technological feat that Los Alamos achieved, the Manhattan Project, uh, the giants of that era, who I actually admire, uh, with the strong exception of Edwin Teller, but that's another story. But, you know, I, I admire Oppenheimer, I admire Hans Bethe, uh, these giants of physics, uh, many of whom later became very ardent arms control um, advocates, so it's very worth noting. And I use this in part to intentionally slam uh, present management uh, at the nuclear weapons laboratories who I think are venal, who are very self-interested, whose primary mission, and they're, you got to hand it to them, they're good at it, their primary mission is to get money and spend it. And they know political opportunities uh, when they see it, and they have played their cards quite skillfully. Um, and we see I, you know, I would say good things and bad things about our current president. One of the bad things I will say is that he has a propensity to cut deals, and in order to secure Senate ratification of the latest bilateral arms control treaty with Russia that, by the numbers, is extremely modest, uh, didn't do that much. Uh, except to reset uh, the bilateral uh, relationship. Um, but President Obama cut a deal uh, with the laboratories uh, that, again, they're adept at exploiting. And we have constant, uh, constantly rising budgets uh, at the three nuclear weapons laboratories to the point where all three of them, uh, their budgets for nuclear weapons programs are basically double um, what the historic average uh, was for the uh, Cold War. So this is, to me, I think, uh, astonishing. And we have this self-perpetuating uh, community uh, that is heavily invested, know where, uh, know where their bread and butter lies. And this brings it back a bit. I tried to tie this into the uh, Occupy movement. But I would submit that there is no clearer example in the country of there being an elitist 1% and then the rest of the 99% than there is with respect to Los Alamos County and, um, and the rest of uh, New Mexico. And then I have to go to uh, Washington, D.C. You know, sometimes, you know, half a dozen times a year. And more often than not, I stay with close friends out in Loudoun County, Virginia, which is on the southern side of uh, Washington, D.C. And it so happens that Loudoun County is the richest county in the United States. And that's, that's because that's where the defense contractors are. And you see the headquarters for... Well, there's Bechtel, there's Lockheed Martin, you know, you could just go down the list. But, but that's why it's so wealthy. And then I find this personally ironic because in a way I commute between Los Alamos here and Loudoun County or Washington, D.C. And the second richest, richest county in the U.S. is Los Alamos. Um, and you see the clear tie-in uh, to the... Uh, See, I don't call it the military-industrial complex. I call it the military-industrial-academic-congressional uh, complex. And, you know, it's all this big nexus uh, is what it is. And I make a point of saying academic as well, uh, specifically uh, pointing my finger at the University of California. Uh, but, of course, there's, uh, there's others. But to get back to uh, the point I'm attempting to make about the 1% and the 99%, again, second richest county, you know, sitting 20 miles uh, from us, uh, it's 83% non-Hispanic white, uh, um, 
and Mexico itself is a slight majority of minority. And then, especially in northern New Mexico, you know, minorities hidden close to uh, two-thirds of the population. But yet we have this affluent uh, island uh, sitting in the middle of, uh, you know, more or less brown uh, northern New Mexico with, you know, these, um, I don't know, just these, these stark socioeconomic uh, disparities. And, uh, you know, I like to say, I say this at least partially in uh, humor, but you know, I used to live up uh, well in Truches, which uh, there's, a, there's a friendly place. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd, I'd get called uh, Anglo, and this is my little joke, and you know, I'm not Anglo, I'm Irish. Um, as, if, <laughs> as if that excuses everything. But I realize I got, I got, a, I got a white face, and I'm pointing out, you know, these socioeconomic uh, disparities that I just think are stunning uh, with, uh, with respect to uh, Los Alamos. Now, I realize um, that I go on for too long. I'm going to let others speak for a little while. Um, if y'all want, I have much more to say. I'd kind of like to uh, get into some of the details of uh, what we're currently doing with, uh, with uh, our own nuclear weapons. And you now, just to give you a teaser, uh, and, and hopefully this will bring me back to the stage. But just to give you a teaser, what we're doing with our existing weapons is that, first of all, um, in, in black and white, we're extending their lives by 30 years. And I say in black and white because in reality, they're probably serviceable for another 70 years. And, you know, there's even... I, I know of one reference from Sandia that says that, but we're taking our present weapons and extending their service lives 70 years. We are rebuilding the production side of the nuclear weapons complex, and I can get into that ad nauseum. Uh, I challenge you. <laughs> um, and then finally, we're introducing new, d despite the denials of, of the federal government, and I saw Hillary Clinton say this by video in the May 2010 review conference for the Non-Proliferation Treaty at the UN. But I saw our Secretary of State tell the 180 plus delegations at the UN that it is the official policy of the US to not create new military capabilities uh, for our <laughs> existing nuclear weapons. And I saw the head, uh, who, who was physically present there uh, at the UN, I saw the head of the semi-autonomous nuclear weapons agency within DOE, um, Tom Dextino of the National Nuclear Security Administration. I saw him repeat Hillary's line. It's the official <laughs> position of the U.S. government at the very highest levels, just, just short of the president himself, the U.S. is making the claim that it will not produce military, new military capabilities for existing nuclear weapons. Well, guess what? I'm calling each and every one of them a liar, and I would like to uh, explain why that is. So, I'll stop for now. <laughs> Thank you.